What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Daily Refinement. This is episode two of the eBay Business Owner Podcast. Um, we're going to go over today um, the power of setting Refinement. a finish line. This is episode. Sorry about that. Today, we're going to go over the power of setting a finish line for your eBay business. And even if you don't have a finish line, it's just good to set one because it's going to help you guys create a whole bunch of improvements. And I want to go over exactly why. I'm also going to go over an eBay store review in verbal form today because the gentleman is trying to go from $2,500 profit to $5,000 a month profit. And it's more of a strategic question. So I'm going to go over getting straight into it. So the first thing is, what is a finish line? And I think there's a few parameters that I want you guys to think about um, with the finish line, which is the first one is, what is the average sale price of the items that you want to sell? It should help you eliminate a lot of stuff. If you want to sell stuff that's $100 or more, you probably shouldn't only shop at Goodwill. It's going to limit your ability to find those types of items. If you want to find a $20 to $60 range, okay, maybe now go to Goodwill, try not to spend over 15 bucks on stuff that'll sell for 60. And then now you have a, a parameter to work with. So ASP is a finish line, set your goal. My personal goal is $60 on average for, C for ASP. So de depending on where you want to be, where you live, you can adjust it, but that's my personal goal. Um, the second thing is, what size uh, do you want your store to be? Um, do you want your store to be huge? For me, I personally want um, an external space or um, the maximum home-based business of around 1,000 square feet. So 1,000 square feet is the size of the store. So I can't really, I don't really want to think about bigger than that or having a, a too big of a facility or too many employees. I like the idea of just having 1,000 uh, 1000 square feet to work with. Tino, the sole advisor, shout out to Tino. He has a 1,200 square foot place with 300 square feet for an office space and 900 for storage. I love it. Tino is awesome. Follow Tino, the sole advisor. He has an awesome store with around 4,000 items in it right now. So he's killing it. Love Tino. He's one of the original people I talked to when I started this reselling game. So the next one is, what is your income goal, right? So do you guys want to make ten thousand uh, dollars a day? Do you want to make ten thousand dollars a year? Uh, five hundred bucks a week? Whatever it is, decide on the income goal. And this is really important because once you set up these parameters, you can start working on the other parts of your business. Because every day, if you get closer, then that's all you need to worry about. You don't need to worry too much about too many variables just are you getting closer to your goal or not every day okay and the last one is what is your level of involvement this is maybe the most important one so the four things are figure out what your asp is how much money do you want to make what size and space do you have and the last one is what is your level of involvement what's up wade sorry i know i saw that you went live the same time as me sorry about going live at the same time, but this is the only time I have to do it. So um, the level of involvement is massive because if you are full time, right? And you um, are don't have extra time because you're already working a full time job, then your level of involvement might only be buying. Okay, so as you guys know, I'm making a system where I buy the item, it's inputted into the system a certain way, I'm gonna be paying 50 cents for that. That is measuring the item, writing a really good title, putting in item specifics, which for me, the item specifics are condition, uh, measurements, and uh, material, and then notable features. If there's a pocket, if there's a zipper, whatever, I wanna add those four things in. So I'm gonna pay somebody 50 cents to enter into my spreadsheet like that. Then I'm gonna have a photographer take all the photographs in the exact order that I want. That's step two. And I'm paying two bucks for the photographs and putting it away, okay? So that's just, pre-packaging the item so it's ready to go. Um, not like this right here where I have to package it. If I have to package it, I'm only gonna pay $1.50. So I don't wanna do any of the packing part. Uh, then the, the other part is listing. So I have a virtual assistant that lists all my items on multiple platforms and I'm paying that person 40 cents per listing, right? So now I have about $2.90 for me to get something onto eBay. That's why uh, I need to have an average selling price of at least $60 to justify that because it's expensive, right? If you have a smaller amount of profit, you're gonna have to do a lot of this work by yourself to make up for it. Okay, so now I wanna talk about, um, all right, let me finish up with the level of involvement, sorry. So I don't want to take photographs. I don't wanna describe my item. I don't wanna pre-package my item. I don't wanna list my item. The only thing I wanna do is purchase stuff, that's it. I don't wanna do any of the accounting. I want that all done for me. So with that in mind, you know, 
one of the things I could do to expand my business faster is actually get a job because since I'm not doing any of that work, I could get a job so I can buy more stuff and put it back through the system. And it would actually, I would probably reach my goal faster if I got a full-time job rather than just reinvesting the profits like this. Okay. So that's the level of involvement. Now I want to go over the four agreements, which I think is very important right now. And the reselling community is kind of going through a little bit of a negative bump in the road. And I, I want to go over the four agreements because it's one of the best books ever. Uh, so if you guys are on social media, if you're on Instagram or Facebook or YouTube and you're making content, please read the four agreements or listen to it on YouTube. It's only about an hour. Uh, Don Ruiz Miguel, I think that's his name, something like that. I have the the, um, the name, his name is in the description below if you guys want to check it out. But it's very, very important. Okay, so the first one, the first agreement um, is be impeccable with your word. Okay, this is the most important one. If you just do this one thing, your whole resale business will transform. And it starts with, um, let's say, for example, you say you're going to list 25 items in a day. Actually do that. Every single day that you say you're going to do something and you don't do it, you're reinforcing to yourself that you're a person that can't get anything done or is not up to par. So you shouldn't beat yourself up. Just set a reasonable goal and actually do that every single day. Be impeccable with your word. If you're not going to do anything, then just don't say anything. Don't train yourself that you're a person that doesn't get things done. That's the wrong way to do it. You want to be really impeccable. Stick with your word. That's number one agreement, and it's very, very important, maybe the most. Just that should take you to the next level. It's super cool. Okay. The next one is don't take anything personal, but also seek help. Okay. So that means like if you're like me and you're publicly on the internet and every single day people are like, uh, your channel sucks. Um, your listings are ugly. Um, how do you even live? Right. Why, how can you wake up with a face like that? When people are doing that to me, right? I actually don't take it personally. And the only response, the only response that's appropriate is thank you. Um, the only the only approach, the only answer is thank you. Someone says you're super ugly, thank you. Someone says you're super amazing, thank you. Also, don't say thank you, but I don't normally look like this, right? Don't just don't defend yourself. Don't do anything. Just say thank you for thank you for your input. I appreciate it, and move on. If you take things personally, you will not be able to do anything and be paralyzed by what other people think of you, you're not going to be able to move on. So there's two things. You have to um, seek help. So ask everybody around you so you can really do it, right? You have to ask people around you so you can get feedback, but also you can't take things personally. So if someone says that your listing is ugly, no one wants to hear their baby is ugly, but if someone tells you your baby is ugly, just say thanks and move on. It goes away. It flows through your body, okay? So one quick personal example. Um, I did the reseller fam event in Kansas City. And some of the organizers and I didn't get along and I was wrong. I, I was, I called one of them a name, which is very unprofessional. So there's no, I mean, other, and I got some feedback back and my response should have been, thank you. And then move on with it. But I, I couldn't let it go. So it ended up festering over a bunch of different months. People thought the events had some kind of an issue when really it was just me having an issue to somebody's opinion, right? So let it go. Don't take things personally, let it flow through your body. The only appropriate response to anything good or positive, in my opinion, is just thank you. What's up, Sam? Thanks for stopping by. Um, okay, next one is don't make assumptions. This is the most important one, guys. So this is the most important thing. You can't assume anything. Just use data to make decisions, and that's it. If you start making assumptions like, is it summer slowdown? Is eBay out against me? Are the items I'm buying not as good as I thought? Am I losing my touch? Am I losing my sanity? Once you start making these assumptions based on nothing, they're going to start festering. And here's another thing that's very odd. Once you start thinking these things, you start attracting that into your life. So you're like, is it summer slowdown? You're going to think that. And God forbid you actually say that. Because if you say that, other people will be like, oh, I think that's happening to me too. And now you have a whole group of people thinking that eBay is slowing down when there's a lot of people, including myself, I'm, I'm up 50% this month, even though it's summer slowdown, right? So I'm not, I'm trying to not do any assumptions, period. And they say, you know, the word assume is making an ass out of you and me. I 100% agree with that. Like, don't assume, period. Don't assume anything. Can't assume because if you assume, it's going to cause all these problems. It's going to cause all this drama because what happens is you're actually going to, you're misinterpreting data, right? So you can't decide 
because you're having a bad day that the website is down. That doesn't even make sense. Yesterday, um, I was looking at the research on Poshmark versus eBay. It's, it's staggering. Okay, obviously, Poshmark is only clothing, but eBay gets a billion unique visits per month. Do you guys realize how insane that is? That's one out of five people on earth visits eBay once a month. That's insane. The, the amount of traffic that they have is mind blowing. Okay, versus 14 million for Poshmark per month, unique visitors. That's still a lot. That still puts Poshmark at the 252nd most visited site on, um, on in the United States. That's a lot. Poshmark in its short history has become one of the most popular websites, period. Right? It's doing very well, 14 million. And of course, Mercari and eBay are going to have more visits because they sell everything. I think Mercari is at around 40 million unique visitors per month, which is also staggering. They have insane volume, but that's what happens when you create a platform that can sell everything. Okay, so one more thought on that is that um, I heard bubblings of uh, Poshmark. People were saying, hey, Poshmark is the best. You need to get on it. I heard this like a year ago. A year ago, actually more than a year ago, I opened my Poshmark account actually in November of 2016. Okay, somebody said, hey, Chris, Poshmark is allowing men's fashion now. Maybe you should explore. At the time, I didn't understand men's fashion that well. So I was like, okay, I'll open an account, but I didn't do, I didn't do anything with it. But that's when I started hearing that it was starting to pick up. And it kept bubbling, it kept bubbling, kept bubbling until, shout out to Kim and Gina, they forced me to get into Poshmark by saying, Chris, you really need to do it. We want your help. So I said, okay, jumped in it to help them. I was in a group with them. They're awesome. But what I'm saying is, I was assuming instead of just jumping into it and trying it, right? And now, this is why I'm bringing it all back to this thought. I'm hearing the same thing about TradeZ, okay? So a lot of people are doing very well on TradeZ. A lot of people that are in this community are doing very well with TradeZ, like Alyssa Thrifts. She's doing awesome. So if she was mentioning, hey, Chris, maybe you should check it out, see what you think. I see her posts on Instagram. I see people saying, don't sleep on TradeZ. And I'm, I've been sleeping. I didn't even open an account until yesterday. Right, I have been sleeping on it completely, asleep. Right, so I, I've been hearing it, but I haven't done anything. I feel like it's the same thing as Poshmark a year ago. I just barely heard of it, and their traffic is really, really, really low. I think it's like only a couple million unique visitors per month. That's not um like slow, but it's not like the you know a heavy hitter like Poshmark right now. So as far as traffic. So it, I don't know if I want to jump into it right now, but it doesn't hurt to get in there and just start investigating instead of assuming. I'm not going to assume TradeZ is good or bad. It just is what it is, and I'm going to try it. I'm going to list a few things, see if it works, see if it doesn't work. Just go for it. Okay, so don't misinterpret. Don't misunderstand. All of the sadness and drama and problems that are coming from your reselling business all come from assuming things. This is why I have changed my ways. I'm not writing as many clickbaity titles. Because even though it does give me more views and it like makes 10 times as much money, it's not good. I don't want that, that kind of negative energy in my space. I'd rather be positive and overall, I'd rather make more money reselling than and talking about stuff on the internet. But if all I did on, um, on YouTube was talk about change, controversy, and um, change, controversy, what's the other one? Conflict, conflict, change, and controversy. If all I did was talk about is eBay dying, um, this is the reason why your sales are slow. If I was writing titles like that, my channel would be ridiculous. I know because I can be, if you guys want to play the drama game, I could win the drama game. I know how to be dramatic. All you have to do is just talk about other people. When you talk about other people, the drama level in your life goes super, super high. When you talk about yourself, it's very quiet. It's very quiet and peaceful when you talk about yourself because only certain people care. So it's interesting, guys. Don't make assumptions. And the final one, this is probably one of my favorite ones ever. And it ties back to the beginning of, of uh, starting a um, finish line is do your best. Okay, you ready? <laughs> so funny in the chat, they put Jake Paul joins eBay. That's a hilarious title. I love it. Um, so here's the battle. There's a battle between speed and quality. And you guys out there are listening right now. You need to improve both, okay? You need to improve speed, and you need to improve quality always. 
both of those things need to get better every single day. And there's going to be times when you have to just when you have to um, sacrifice one for the other. I'll give you two extremes. You have on one side, BHFO or giant conglomerates, swap.com, millions and millions of listings. These guys, two pictures, front, back, very minimal description, very sterile, maybe five to 10% returns. Okay. Very sterile, speed, 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 speed. They take like the camera at BHFO was fixed. A person is putting the mannequin in front, back, pushing it out, new mannequin. Right, it's crazy. Zulily does the same thing. They're listing thousands of items a day. Okay, so if you if you want to start feeling really bad about yourself, compare your daily productivity of five to fifty listings with a company that does upwards of five to nine thousand listings per day. Right, if you really want to start feeling bad about yourself, compare yourself to those guys. Um, anyway, so. There's that side. On the opposite spectrum, right? There are people that I know that spend ten dollars a listing to list it, and they do one or two listings per hour. Okay, instead of forty seconds a listing like BHFO, one hour per listing. We're talking about all twelve photos in perfect lighting, every single thing described. You know the um, the power button on this nineteen forty two toy soldier. Um, tank is slightly sun damaged but that's normal for a toy of this age uh, let's look at the wear on the bottom it is a uh, you know probably played with four or five summer evenings you know it's crazy things that people are writing long paragraphs long descriptions an hour per listing and those guys are getting the maximum amount for that item even more than market so let's say the market for this this vintage toy is hundred dollars they're getting $116 for it because they're spending every second and quality and time making it perfect, right? There's the total extreme of that, right? So you can see people who are like completely robotic, like everything's just moving in and out versus ones that are sort of like handcrafted, handcrafted listings. So there's a balance between those two. And the fourth agreement is do your best, which means all you have to do is do your best at improving speed and quality every day that's it that's all you can do are you getting closer to the asp you want the size of the store you want your income goal or your level of involvement those are the things that are important if you want to reduce your time sorting then you need to have a store with more expensive stuff and less of it if you say hey i want a really high asp of over a hundred dollars and you go and buy 75 things that are fifty dollars you're not following your own word and you're not moving closer to your goal. You're moving farther away from your goal. So just be careful. Make sure that your actions that you're doing actually reflect what you're trying to do. It's really important, guys. So hopefully um, that was for TNT on eBay for the store review. So hopefully that's useful for you trying to achieve your goals and move from 2,500 to 5,000. Um, you can email me at chrisadailyrefinement.com if you have any more questions. Um, so this gentleman is trying to improve his replenishable game. He's got a few things that he orders from AliExpress or maybe locally that he's trying to replenish. And that's great. I just want you guys to be patient. It's very hard, right? It's very, very hard to find items that you can continuously reorder. I am working on that, I'm working on um, relationships with companies that can do drop shipping. I want to do local drop shipping from companies that are here uh, in the United States because I feel like it's okay. It depends. I, I would rather do it from a local distributor than Walmart, Home Depot, or et cetera. That's a little bit more risky for me, shopping, because those those sites can instantly go out of stock. I want to deal with uh, ABC Distribution locally that only sells fire hose parts. You know, I want to list those parts on eBay, and if they sell, I'll have them fulfill it for me. That's the kind of drop shipping stuff that I'm interested in, um, not so much the retail arbitrage part. Now I'll go ahead and take some questions if you guys have anything. Let's see. I know, right? I got the door open today, so there's a lot of cars driving by. Let's see. You thought Posh was much easier than eBay? Kind of. Poshmark is not so much set and forget. You have to be sharing your closet for it to work. Um, it's not really set or forget, to be honest. Let's see. How do I deal with men's clothing lots? Uh, oh, how do I do? I do I do not as well as with women's clothing lots, personally. Like um, one thing I'm trying is Macy's Wholesale. It's not not my favorite, but you guys are welcome to go to Macy'sLiquidation.com. 
uh, submit your resale license. And now you can start buying from Macy's, right? I know a lot. Of, there's a lot of sellers that are very successful with Macy's. It would be easier if you have um, experience with women's clothing because it's 90% women's clothing. Your ASP has dropped since you've been getting lame best offers. Uh, what's up, Sue? You might be getting um, lame best offers because it's summertime. Like, for example, my the first item I sold on Poshmark was a pair of Sorel boots. I have tons of Sorel boots, and I haven't had even. I, I I would welcome a lowball offer. I haven't had anything, no traction whatsoever. I just think that it's warm right now, and who's buying furry boat furry boots right now? Um, trying to really get into like other get into other categories to offset that. Um, you're trying to learn Poshmark before getting into it. Don't do that. Just get into it. I'm going to learn TradeZ by selling some stuff on TradeZ. I'm not going to assume anything because you, you just don't know. Um, off topic, when am I getting married? I am proposing. I'm getting the ring next month. It should be exciting. So I'm going to get the ring next month, and then I have until mid-September is the deadline. So um, once we're engaged, we're going to move in, and then... Um, I'm this is a little bit personal, but I'll share with you guys. Like, I am leaning towards just doing a party, just a reception, um, and not doing um, the full on wedding. But I don't know. The reason why I want to do that is because it's going to be like five people that I know and 200 people that she knows. So it's going to be a little odd with having the wedding just for her side. So I don't know. Mozart's asking, How do you deal with lowball offers? I say, thank you. Someone says, hey, how about a dollar for your $100 jacket? I say, thanks for the offer. Decline. And I try to, um, in my opinion, I like to decline offers that are less than 50% of the total amount. And the reason why I say that is because I want them, I don't want to create any legitimacy to their offer. Like, for example, I used to sell cars. People would say, hey, how about 10000 for a $20,000 car? And I would be like, thank you so much for your time. We have some free water over here. Have a great day. You know, like I don't want to. I mean, like, let me ask my boss if we can do a half off. Like that's that's dumb. You don't want to give any validity to somebody's offer if it's under fifty percent, in my opinion. But I also hear the opposite side of the coin where people say somebody offered a dollar and I counter offered ninety nine and they accepted. Yeah, I mean, I could do that, but like for me, since I get I'm getting so many offers every day, I just decline the ones under fifty. If they really want it, they'll they'll reoffer. Am I going to eBay open? Definitely. I'm going. Um, we rented a house. There's going to be like five or six people. Maybe we'll do some stuff here and there. Um, how do I feel about shopping on Shopify versus eBay? I have a friend that works for Kylie Jenner's team for Shopify. She did 174 million in the tra in the uh, in the trailing 12 months. 174 million. Kylie Jenner is a is a beast. Um, okay, that's true, Maya. Maybe I'll do a wedding because you're right. She probably wants a wedding. I don't really care, but I'll do the wedding. Uh, let her plan the wedding. Good, good call. I can let her do it. Uh, there's a lot of the most common what uh, marriage advice I get is don't get married. I I probably have 400 messages that are like, Chris, you look so happy. Please don't get married. That's a very very common message. Um, let's see. Coming in late. What do I think about sales tax ruling? Yes, I think that um, eBay is smart enough and Amazon is smart enough to collect sales tax for us. Eventually, it's not going to be easy, but I like the idea of that of that money, raising the price for everything across the whole board and giving that money to the states. I have no I have no issue with that, but I do think that it will hurt sellers unless it's across the board. It needs to be across the board. I wish I was Brandon Carter. Um, he he's like one of my favorite YouTubers. He's from Southside Chicago. I love that guy. Um, you're this. Oh, uh, see, okay. I'll definitely have to do the. Maybe I will do the wedding because I for, I forgot that I have an Instagram following that wants to see. So maybe I'll do that. Do I drop price a lot? Uh, no, I don't price. I don't. I price pretty competitively. I'm not doing a lot of price drops. What's up, Cindy? Cindy's in Chicago. Let's see. You're wondering about selling higher value goods. Uh, it is more potential for scams, absolutely. So if you sell stuff that's um, five, for, like Prince has a two hundred dollar ASP or whatever, and has one return a day. Do you have the cojones for a two hundred dollar return every day? Do you? Is that six thousand dollars per month? Like, do you have the? What's another? What's another more PC word for balls? Especially if you're a chick. I don't know. 
are you able to handle those, those kind of returns? If not, don't sell expensive stuff. For me, I like just being able to refund them. Don't like it, here's your money back. Uh, let's see. Am I going to do a prenup? Definitely not. Um, I am 100% sure she's going to earn more money in her lifetime than me. She's a very, very good investor. So I don't see... I might be sending a prenup, so I can't touch her money, but I don't see it going the other way. Um, that's true. I could adopt half of her family. Oh, snap. Buffalo Shark is going to cancel eBay and go to Poshmark. See, um, one thing I don't like about Poshmark is how expensive it is, 20% fees, but they uh, don't accept returns and they don't have insertion fees. Okay, so I'm torn. I wish I could sell 100% of my stuff on eBay, but it's just not the case. Um, am I going to have a meetup in Vegas? Yes, it's on my eBay store. It's a nonprofit event. 100% uh, of the money will go to the Blind Center of Nevada. It's a 100% charity auction. Uh, it will be streamed live also, so you guys can watch it. Uh, the Blind Center is a seven-figure eBay store, so I want to go in there and do a tour, see what it looks like to do that much volume. Um, really cool. So I want to go in there and see what uh, eBay store with a lot of employees looks like. Live stream it for you guys so you can check it out. The money goes straight to the charity. It's literally a 100% charity auction. There's no way for me to make money on it. So you can just... You can buy it on my eBay store and watch it live, or you can go in person if you're going to be at eBay open. It's on the Friday after. It's 8 in the morning, so the posh hanger, she's going to show up. Monica, if you guys know her on Instagram, she's going to show up after she wakes up, so probably around 1 o'clock. If you guys want to see her, she will be there at lunchtime. Uh, testicular fortitude, that, that is a great way to do it. Hopefully that doesn't get me flagged. Uh, balls probably will be, so this video will have no commercials in it. Uh, bravado is a good word. You got married in a courthouse with a scheduled appointment and flew out the USV. That's awesome. Um, she's definitely down for um, skipping the wedding because she's okay with us using that money as a down payment on a house. I mean, it's it's it's, it's similar for or in California, down payment for a bathroom. So she's down. Um, let's see, sugar mama. I know, right? Uh, she's also a lot younger than me. She's she's like in her mid twenties, and I'm like uh, almost I'm I'm old, so definitely getting up there. Your eBay women's clothing game is blowing up. I hear you there. Everyone is leaving eBay, and my eBay sales have been great. I'm up fifty four percent. That's a lot. So my eBay sales are, are killing it right now. And I got two negative feedback today, so it's pretty brutal. I got a negative feedback for. Um, delivering in four business days and she's she said two business days but two business days is actually my my uh, handling time so like two business day handling time and four business day is when it actually arrived so it arrived in six days from when she ordered it maybe eBay can remove that and the other one they said there was peeling on the inside and that's my fault because I didn't check the peeling on the inside of the item I didn't even know that was a I didn't even know items could peel on pill on the inside so I'll have to check with her um, I reached out to both of them. I think both of them will go away. Um, both of them might be removed by eBay. I don't know. I don't have any special power, by the way. I can't call in a favor. I don't even know why that's a rumor going around. I wish that was a rumor. Um, let's see. Am I still working another full-time job? Kind of. Um, I have YouTube, which takes a lot of time. Um, I'm making my content a lot more organized. Like I have notes. I have... Um, a more description I put the notes in the description below so if you guys are watching my videos in the future you don't even really need to watch the video you can just go to the description and read the nuggets and then move on with your day you don't have to you don't have to hang out you can just get the tips and move on uh, how tall am I I'm six two um, I know trying to find a, oh, it's, she's not she, she's from a regular family but she's just really good with money because um, I think um, there's two kinds of families like my family grew up with no money my parents never had any money and they always wanted to be they wanted to keep up with the Joneses even though they didn't have money so my parents would save up and buy like a nice watch or save up or whatever they're like we live in America you don't need to pay for anything all, all you need to do is be able to afford the down payment that's exactly how my parents thought her parents are the opposite they grew up poor so they were frugal right that makes more sense to me whatever my parents were doing is ridiculous like it's so dumb and that's why they ended up in the situation as they did uh, no my, my patreon is still open if you want to join um, it's a patreon.com slash daily refinement 
it's it's different now. It's every morning we just do a stand up meeting on improvements. So I would be like, hey Mike, what are you working on? He'd be like, well, I don't like the way my titles are. And I'd be like, okay, your homework is to go look at five stores you like, get those titles, put it in a spreadsheet. You make your title, and now knock that part out. And somebody else is like, oh, I don't like my shipping process. It's funky. And I'm like, okay, figure out what boxes you need, what poly mailers you need, knock that out today. So it's just a hundred people doing that in the morning. That's what my mastermind now is a little different. It's a process call. It used to be more like, did you list your 50 items this week? But then that's like kind of a waste of everybody's time. It's like the four agreements. The first one's be impeccable with your word. Just say, just list what you said you're going to list and let's work on the other stuff. Um, can I dunk a basketball? I can. So, or I could. Um, I have a video on my on my fitness Instagram, which I don't follow up with anymore of me dunking a basketball. Um, in 2014, I hired a personal trainer to teach me how to do that. So, um, which is it, which makes me weird. It's it's a little funny because people were saying, "Why would you um, pay someone for something when you could just learn it yourself?" Like, I actually YouTubed how to dunk a basketball, and I couldn't figure it out. And I hired somebody. It took one month for me to figure out how to dunk a basketball. So like, it's worth it because I just immediately figured out how to do it. So I mean, it just I, I I totally disagree. I think that if you want to learn something, find the best person at it and then do that. That's it. Why would you want to struggle and learn it by yourself on YouTube unless you have a lot of time? But like, I, I'd rather use eBay. I'd rather use YouTube for community than to learn something. I'd rather hire somebody to show me how to do it. Um, Let's see here. <laughs> it's funny. Are there really people watching on both YouTube and Instagram? That's ridiculous. Um, but yeah. Uh, thank you, DJ, for watching these live videos. They're awesome. Yeah, I don't do live that much anymore because of time. But um, I am going to start doing more lives as I clear up my time. Like I put one of my goals is to only do the buying in my business. So as I improve my eBay business, this is how I show improvement. Am I doing less, right? The more items in here that are prepackaged, I'm doing less. The more um, my accounting is done for me, I'm doing less. So Ashley, you guys know her, Millennial Mouse on Instagram. She's helping me clean up some of these processes because you you run out of time. So I'm like, hey, Ash, help me figure out if Trade Z is worth my time. Go go do some homework and figure out, like find some good Trade Z sellers and let's see if we can model that so I can add that to my repertoire so I can put eBay, Poshmark, Mercari, Tradesy, have somebody else list it for me and see if it helps, right? So I don't know. Let's we'll see. Best way to increase listing traffic. I have a whole list of that in my um, thing. Let's see here. Let me see. Okay, so the best ways to improve your listings, usually it starts with revising and improving your listings. Better titles, better description, better item specifics. Those are the three most important, followed by item description. If you don't believe me, you can look at, <clears throat> I won't use myself as an example, but I don't have any description and my sell through is just fine. So I literally put pre-owned. I would, I would put nothing. If there was the option to put nothing in a description, I would have done nothing. But revising or improving your listings is probably the top thing. Um, uh, stale listings I don't know actually I should probably ask Cindy in the chat um, what the best way to deal with stale listings is I've heard people say end it sell similar I've heard people say end it and selling similar doesn't work because eBay knows the exact same photo the exact same BS listing as the first time why would it be better this time you have to actually change it so maybe refoto items I don't know I, I'm not a big fan of going back into the old system and I'm a fan of continuous improvement but then there's the people on the opposite side to say, go back and fix what you broke in the first place and then move on. So it's up to you. Um, you can increase the number of listings you have. We'll start to make the old stuff sell. That works for me. Um, I just sold an item today that was six months old. So just list more, it'll pop up more. Um, you can add a new platform. So selling on more than one platform will help you sell through more. You can add promotions. I recommend a combined order discount. Uh, I was looking at Cindy's store this morning, and she has uh, buy two, get 30% off or something. you got to do stuff to get people to, to, to go to your store. Um, also, auctions is a great way to bring traffic to your store. Uh, I had 
I have four times as much traffic on the days that I have auctions ending. So in theory, I should have auctions ending every single day, at least a couple. Um, you could also, I haven't tried this yet, but you can actually email your customer through the eBay system. This is kind of revolutionary maybe for some people out there. You can email people um, on eBay a couponless code for a discount in your own store. I don't know if you guys know that. You can go and make a promotion for 10% off if you spend $20 and then message that to your customers and it's completely within eBay rules and say, hey, thank you so much for buying something from me. Please leave me a positive feedback. I appreciate you. Um, or maybe don't say that, but say thank you for buying from me. As a courtesy, I just gave you this coupon that gives you 10% off anything else in my store. Thank you so much. Have a great day. You could send that to every single one of your customers. I would be surprised if you send that to every single one of your, your previous customers and you didn't make an immediate sale. That just it's just kind of time consuming. But that probably would work. I wonder if you could automate sending a message inside. Um, but yeah, this is um this is what Cindy was saying. She she just called me a stalker, which is funny, but she, but it's it's also true. So I want to I want to share with you guys one more thought before I take it. I call it a day, which is um there's a book called I think it's called Double Double by Cal. I want to say Cal Newport, but it doesn't sound right. The guy that has one eight hundred. The guy that was running one eight hundred uh, got junk. So that's one of the biggest resellers of all time. And he calls it um, R and D. Okay. So uh, it's not research and development. He calls it rip off and duplicate. Okay. So I will tell you right now that I have gotten a lot of negativity from social media because I did that. I basically looked at the top 25 Instagram sellers of Poshmark and I combined all of their ideas into my store. So I totally ripped off all their ideas and put them into my store. So like, that's what I did. So that that's the research and development. I read that in a book. I didn't even come up with that on my own. I stole that idea from somebody else. So like, that is how I made my store work. So you can do, you can do what you do, but I just think you definitely want to take as many ideas from different stores as possible, put that all together and make it into a nice one. Steal like an artist. It's a great book. Um, the best sellers are always stuck in the competition. True. Yeah, that's true. Um, you want to go in there and look and see what people are doing. Um, free shipping, non-free shipping. I, I, you know what? I am a big fan of free returns. And I just turned it off just to see if it would do something. So, um, I don't any, I don't even really have enough returns to justify doing that, but I just want to try it. Uh, I guess, see, some people say that's business and some people say I'm going to hell. So I don't know. Like, I feel like, are there really even original ideas at this point? Like, um, what if you copyright, um, using a title? You can't. I don't know. Let's see. Are those new balance boxes? They are. Do I recommend seven day, 10 day or 30 day listings? I recommend seven day auctions starting on Sunday or Monday or 10 day auctions starting on Thursday or Friday. Um, for me personally, I like that. 30 day listings. I recommend maybe if you're just getting started because it'll force you every 30 days to go in there and relist. But, um, I'm not very good at that. So I put good till canceled and now I have an alarm on Wednesday night to go in and edit listings. So every single Wednesday night, um, before I go to sleep, I go in there and I change my listings, try to make them better. Um, that, that's just what I'm doing personally because I got I got kind of chastised by eBay. So when I went to eBay, I was like, oh, I do 30-day listings. And um, when they end, I fix them. And, and one of the people there that was like, are you trying to be a business or are you just going to suck? Because people who suck only edit their listings one time per month. Our business does it every day. So it's like, <laughs> all right, bro. So this, it, you know, the thing is like... Um, Maybe a younger version of me would have had my feelings hurt, but at this point, I don't care. Like, that just means that was great. He was like, you are a Bush League amateur seller, and I'm a pro. So this is pretty funny. Um, that's true. I just started at 10K on the Bay. Um, and it's it's I'm trying to do – I'm still trying to do 10K kind of. Like, I was talking to Tino. I asked him what his capacity is, and he said 10,000 listings. I was like, man, maybe he's just trolling me, but he's not trolling me. Like, we figured it out. He has 18 foot ceilings, right? Um, and I was like, I talked about it with him. 
these lists, these up here, I can reach them because I'm tall. But my, um, what if one of these were to fall on my worker who's only five five? It would crush them, right? If fourteen pairs of shoes fell on his or her head, it might kill them. So uh, I was thinking about um, one of those rolly cages, right? That has the cage on top, so like you can't fall out of it and hurt yourself in theory, or it reduces the ability for you to fall off the ladder. And so I told Tino, what are you going to do about the 18 foot ceilings? Like, how are people going to reach? And he literally texted me a picture of that cage thing. So like we're on the same way, same wavelength here. You get a lot more space when you go vertically. And I still, in all my stores, I still have 7,500 items. So it's not like, um, I'm not close to 10 K anyway. Um, you're posting your first item on eBay. Sweet. Um, your recommendation, return paid by seller. Yeah, no, that's great. If you start right off the bat with return paid by seller, you're providing the ultimate return experience for your customer. Got to wear a hard hat working here. Uh, can eBay cut your listing traffic after a monthly account review? Yes. If you, have, if you fall below standard, I'm pretty sure they will reduce your traffic. But I don't think the top rated and above standard are that much different. But I do think if you fall below standard, your listings will be hidden a little bit. I don't know because um, there's something about eBay's algorithm. I mean, they use, there's thousands of variables, but there's something about um, doing poorly that makes your traffic lower. I'm sure it's like that on every single platform. They can't, they can't be equal. They have to give more traffic to people who do better. Let's see. Uh, what's up, Clarence Ninja? Do I get charged an, ins an assertion fee? You you get charged an assertion fee every 30 days or it goes towards your listing limit. Um, Poshmark, the top, is the top price supposed to be zero? No. The top price is supposed to be what you guess MSRP to be. So I always tell people that I'm within 50 bucks. And that's that's not that accurate. But again, I'm not trying to gouge people. People who put $777 for a used Adidas tank top, that's stupid. It was never $777. Don't do that. But if you put $23, that's not that's that's not the MSRP, but it's not that far off. Let's see. Instagram. How do I handle non-paying people? For the most part on eBay, I decline and change the price. So this is a little bit harsh too, but someone will say, this happened this morning. Somebody offered $50 on a $69 pair of boots 50 on 69 so i said i declined it and i said hey i'm gonna do i'm doing a sale today let me know what you think and i declined it and i reduced it to 59.99 he just bought it so no non-paying bidder because i have immediate payment required so i really like that and i really like big stores that don't offer best offer for that very reason of not dealing with people who don't pay um, yeah, and don't worry about unpaid. I have, um, even though I don't accept best offers, sometimes I counter and they accept and I'm stuck in the same bucket. So I don't always end it. Depends on how much time I have. Um, I know some bird chirps in the background. This is real. This is a real background. Somebody said that I created this set for my YouTube channel. Really? Like if you look at my YouTube revenue, it's not worth it to do that. Yes. Okay. So Ron is asking about um, that an example for my shortened titles. Okay. So this is a very, it's a very good question. I'll tell you what my titles are right now. See, I love actually keeping track of stuff because then people can ask me a question. And I can actually give you an answer. Okay. So my title. Here we go. If you have a pen, it's probably be something to write down. Um, and this is totally different from Cindy's store in the chat and Monica, the posh hanger. They kill it for sell-through rate and their titles are longer. So don't listen to me and shorten all your titles. Just do what works for you. I'm going to use a 55 character title because it's going to be the same on Poshmark and eBay. This is what it is. It is brand, gender, color, two item descriptions, item, size, location msrp if i have room if i don't have room i'm just gonna leave it 
no MSRP. And I like the MSRP because uh, and uh, because it's kind of like psychological, but it doesn't help with search ranking. So as an example, Hudson Hudson Women's Army Green bootleg jeans, size thirty, A two five sixteen, hundred nineteen dollars. That would be my title. It's fifty five characters. I could add more. Uh, I could put denim. I could put um, medium wash. I could add a whole bunch more stuff into it. I could do four item descriptions. Just me personally, that's what I'm doing right now. What's the best business model for low capital? Um, probably sell everything you own. Uh, a little bit of drop shipping. Uh, garage sales. That would be the best thing to do. Um, sell whatever you can get for free, that you can get for really cheap or free. That would be my recommendation for people just getting started. Power seller versus top rate. I don't think power seller has any has any ber uh, bearing any bearing on your store whatsoever. Uh, Tanya is saying that the original price would be what the item originally sold for. Again, that's correct. That's what MSRP manufacturer suggested retail price. But since you don't always know, I don't think it's negative to guess as long as it's reasonable. Like I said, the Adidas tank top. If you guess twenty three dollars for MSRP, it's around that. Might be 29, might be 27, might be 20, 20, but you're not gonna be so far out. But if you put $75, people are gonna think you're lying to them. So just don't, just just be as, as close as you can be. Do I listen to Beyonce? I don't, I don't listen to Beyonce, but I don't have an issue with her. She's cool. She's in a power couple. Um, how do I handle a negative feedback saying that the shoes were fake? Wow. Um, I would say we only sell 100% authentic goods. Um, we offer a return policy as well. That's what I would put. Uh, if I was only selling men, if I was, yeah, I would put men's and women's in the title. That's what I would do. And the reason why I don't take men and women out of the title on Poshmark, even though you don't need it, is because... I'm just going for speed. There's a difference between speed and quality, and I'm just keeping my speed the same when I go through. I don't want to. I don't want my workers changing the title. I just want to go for speed. It's going to make a difference not having the full 55 characters on eBay, and I'm okay with that. I don't know if it's negative or positive, but I know it's different. But I'm okay with it. Oh yeah, if you guys could hit the like button, that would be awesome. Appreciate you guys stopping by. 97 people watching. <laughs> Let's see. Now, okay, let's go back to the drama thing. If I had put the real reason your sales are slow, there'd be three times as many people in here. But I'm, I'm off the drama train. Uh, that's true. I do listen to a lot of Nate Dog. Give us one good sourcing spot besides Goodwill and garage sales. Uh, church sales are great. Um, church neighborhood sales are, are the best. Um, I I went to a um, kindergarten flea market at a school, and those kids were hustlers. They were like, on eBay, it's going for thirty dollars, so I'll take nineteen. It's like, what? So I mean, kids kids know what's up these days. What's up, Randy? Appreciate the super chat of ten dollars. Um, does a shortened title apply to drop shipping? Probably not. I would say on drop shipping, you want to include the same the longest title you can and get as much uh, converting traffic as you can. Why is gender important if both platforms categorize? I just think it, okay, this is my theory, Maya, this is a good question. I think the word women's ranks really high. That's why I think it matters. Otherwise, I don't think it matters. I think that the word women's just ranks really high. So in the Cassini engine's like, what's all this women's stuff? Must be selling wallets, let's, let's rise it up. Um, oh, wow. There's a lot of people rather be scanning. Great job and putting in a bunch of different ways for people to find stuff. Outlets, offer up, eBay to eBay, eBay to Amazon. Um, you guys know Prince, um, my boy. He sell, he's, uh, he's now Prince Patel on all social media. He doesn't even have a car, guys, and he did $600,000 last year because he buys from eBay to eBay. eBay to eBay. eBay is probably top five sources to source ever because there's a billion things for sale 
I put in my in my um, my list of my 100 best tips video, which I'll link right here. Just kidding, I'm too lazy. I'm not going to link it right here. But um, that video, the top voted tip was uh, realtors because realtors know before a house is going to become an estate sale, and you can actually go there before it becomes an estate sale and before they donate stuff to Goodwill and take all the goodies. Let's see. What? Oh, Thrifty Christian. I responded to your comment, I thought. Um, the software that I use to uh, give remote access for my VAs is called GoToPC. So um, uh, I'll shout out. I don't know. If I, actually, I'm not going to shout them out. But two really popular Instagrammers convinced me to not use a bot. So um, and that's one of the reasons why I have a computer set up with remote access so somebody can log in and do the work for me. So um, it's called GoToPC. Go to my PC. Uh, Tanya is saying you should put zero if you don't know. I'm okay with that too. Um, I am okay with that too. Uh, and again, Tanya is saying that it plays a role in the algorithm on Poshmark. I agree with that. I think you want to be about 50 or 60% off of the um, MSRP. So customers think they're getting a good deal and Poshmark likes Poshmark likes making money. So they, they want to, if I was Poshmark, I would present the most expensive item that you want. That's how I would do it. If I was the if I was the Poshmark algorithm, I would give you guys the most expensive thing you want because I would make the most money from it. On eBay, do I charge shipping for all my items? For the most part, yes, um, I do. Uh, it, the thrifty Christian. That's interesting. That well, I mean, there's the, the most common advice I get on YouTube is don't get married. The second one is that if I want to be rich, I need to find God. That is the number two most common thing I get. And, and um, because sometimes I mention that most of the wealthy people that I know, like nine out of every 10, they're like devout Christians. So I don't know what the correlation is, but then each time I mention that, I get a bunch of information, all the scripture. So it's all good. Let's see. Who sold eBay to eBay? That's uh, That's Prince. He's Prince Patel on all social medias. He goes eBay to eBay. He did 600K last year, and he's in he's in Gary Vee's new book, uh, Crushed It. Let's see here. That, that's the two things I get most common, though. I literally get, you look really happy, don't get married. That I get, I've had 200 of that email from different people. And then the other one is, if you want to get rich, you need to find God. Because even if you, okay, and one person explained it. Even if you don't believe in God, becoming Christian will make you rich because the principles of making money you will learn from God. I, I'm not. I, I'm not. I don't know if that's true or not. I'm just letting you guys know that's the message that I get. How would I best optimize listings for international buyers? Okay, in my opinion, the best way to optimize my listings for international buyers is by not charging for shipping. I'm sorry. For, is by charging for shipping. So, for example, I charge what it's around what it costs for shipping. So when somebody buys it internationally, they're not double paying the free shipping plus the international shipping, if that makes sense. Because there's not really free shipping. You're baking it into the price, hopefully. So if you can lower your price a few bucks, you're making it easier for international buyers. And not doing um, GSP and shipping directly to your customers is more work for you, but you're saving your customer customs. Let's see. Correlation doesn't equal causation. That's true. It's just funny, Kyle. That, that's just I can't believe how many messages I get like that. Um, you don't think your customers look at MSRP on Posh? Uh, I I do. Like for example, I'm trying to wear 100% Lululemon because I want to be a basic white girl so I can sell really well on Poshmark because that's what the the people that I've seen do really well on Poshmark are basic white women women not not girls like older i'd say like 40 plus women are the ones doing the crazy volume like the seven figure store like suzanne cannon that's like a that's like a lady she's not a girl she's definitely like over 40. It's, it appears maybe she's not over 40. she's probably rude maybe she's mid 30s um and i'm just saying like there's a there's a ambi like a um a perception you give 
when you're a mature career woman because like the clothing that she sells i when i look at um infinity rain that clothing looks like it would do super well okay because it's like it's very modest it's very stylish it is it kind of looks like cheap stuff that you'd buy la too but it's but it's it's on point it's on point it's exactly what it would look like and it's coming from a, a and the lady is the model in a lot of the photos which is great i love that whole concept love that whole concept um let's see what was the soft the software i mentioned a while to filter out your poshmark sales emails to folder that's just in the my sale it's a new tool it's in my selling tools you can use that to um download your sales statistics now i know right so like well i got in trouble i get in trouble all the time for speaking my mind so i gotta i gotta just probably just not talk i just you know the best way for me to eliminate all this drama is just to stop talking uh there's a lot of really bad stuff on the i don't even know i'm gonna go there um not all look at it but those who do will be more likely yeah i agree tanya i think that if you have a, a realistic markdown okay let me give you an example this is a lululemon pullover sweater right it's like a half zip now i was looking at comps and the lady put 169 MSRP, 79 is the cost. That's That sounds about right to me. I don't know what it is, but all the stuff at Lululemon, like the minimum is like 140. So that sounds about right to me. Does it have to be exact? Not really. The fact that it's 69 or 8, 79-ish is like good enough for me as a buyer. I don't need to spend a whole bunch of time looking for it. If I find the right thing, I'm going to buy it. But that's also a guy mentality. I'm not going to waste a lot of time shopping. If it is close enough, I'm going to buy it. But I'll see people, and I have a lot of people, who won't buy it over $5 different. That would never stop me from buying the piece of clothing that I want, but it will stop some people. Like I set the record, I think, for at least that I've seen. I had 30 back and forth offers on Poshmark over like a couple dollars. And and after, like, it was like 99, 28, 98, 38, 95, 65 and then we went back and forth and then when it started to get really close i actually ignored the person until it expired and i changed my price and i was like now it's going to cost more because we already went you already wasted 10 minutes of my time in the best offer so now it's 46 instead of 45 and in the late we, we finally agreed at 45 but like i was you know playing that game can I make a new video about shipping? Yeah, I am going to make a bunch of videos um, for Poshmark shipping and eBay shipping. Uh, wait, wait, which my email is chris at dailyrefinement.com. I don't remember getting that email, but I could have missed it uh, or I could have accidentally ignored you. So just email me again at chris at dailyrefinement.com and I will respond back. But I only have two minutes left before Instagram turns me off. So I got to answer as many questions as I can. Um, how would I list a coach park liner with MSRP of 50? Um, I would I would sell it at 10 or 20 percent less than similar ones in the sold section. Do I cross post? Yes, I do cross post. Um, I, I personally would list it at I'd have to I'd have to see it, but again, 10 percent under similar. I do put MSRP in my title uh, almost always. Okay, minute one minute left. You want to start selling men's on Posh? Um, yes, I have a second closet. All I have to do is email them and say, I would like a second closet for wholesale, men's or women's or boutique or whatever. You have to give a specific reason why you want to separate it, and they will give you a second closet. I haven't tried getting a third closet, but I, I have to. Uh, how low of an offer do I accept? I accept about 70% of market as the lowest usually. No comps, then I'd, I'd probably list it at MSRP. There's no comps. Sales emails. Uh, for Oh, um, can you email me that question so I can answer it? Chris at dailyrefinement.com. That's going to take a longer answer. Um, that's true. You need to get a Dymo label printer my, or a Rolo. I've heard good things about Rolo. I kind of feel like the the Dymo 4XLs, the Mercedes-Benz 
of um, printers. Like it looks really good, but doesn't really operate that well. And people are like, oh, I love my Mercedes except for the three grand in maintenance. That's exactly how I feel about the Dymo. Uh, let's see. All right, guys, I'm going to hop off. If you guys have any questions, email me, chrisdailyrefinement.com. Thank you so much for joining. This will be available on iTunes. So if you guys want to check it out, all the links, all the stuff I use is in the description below. Hit the like button on the way out, and I'll see you guys in the next episode. Peace.